You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. Howdy, everyone. Welcome. How's it going? Good? Good. Well, welcome to another episode of Ask Drone You. My name is Paul. My name is Rob, and thank you as always for spending a few minutes of your day with us. Hope you're having a great one, and uh, looking forward to hanging with you. Definitely looking forward to hanging out with you. We are grateful, um, but we're not going to start this podcast like some people start all of their classes, And uh, but just know genuinely we are grateful. That being said, it's an exciting time this year. Why? Well, Spoiler alert, <clears throat> in January, I think we're all going to see three brand new drones from three separate companies. Oopsie, whoopsie, you know, I don't really care. So <laughs> I just let the cat out of the bag. Uh, anyway, I am really excited, though, because I think 2020 will be a year of growth. Uh, if we're able to overcome some of the hurdles um, in the industry as a whole, and I'm hoping that we get a chance to kind of talk about that. Um, uh, well, maybe soon about what types of hurdles uh, are really hurting the industry as a whole, and we'll get we'll get to that. Uh, but today we're going to be talking about you know something that it, it may seem well not important. Yet at every flight mastery class that we have, when we go over the rules of takeoff, the third rule is always something that people don't understand until the worst happens. Until a battery voltage error comes up until all of a sudden your drone is just losing altitude and even as you're pushing the elevator up and up and up and up and up nothing's happening tragic it's one of these things that what if there was a magic formula for you to know well whether your battery was going to work or was going to fail on you in flight and then what if there was a magic formula to understand just really how many you know battery cycles that we can expect to get out of any particular battery. And then what does it really cost per flight if you're calculating the cost of batteries? And what do you do with the batteries once you have realized they've reached their end of life and you don't want your house to burn down? Well, I know we've talked about batteries a lot, but today we're gonna kind of bring everything in context because you know, we have a specific question from a user just about recycling batteries. And he mentioned something in his question about flight mastery. And after a flight mastery class this last week in California, I had someone pretty prominent at the class and they said, you know, they've they've been to he said over half a dozen different trainings. Hmm. And after going to our flight mastery and doing the battery test he realized that he had four bad batteries. Yeah. The liability for a pilot may be low if you have a bad battery, but for this particular individual and the responsibilities that he had for his agency, not so much. It could have been career ending. So I want to ask you a question. How important is it to have some sort of standard for battery indication? Right? Everyone's used to... Um, Everyone's used to, what is it called, your, uh, your gas gauge, right? You know that approximately when you get down to about 50 or so miles, that the light's going to go on and it's time to get gas. <laughs> the gas gauge looks pretty much identical in every single car though, right? So why is it so different from one vehicle to another? And why do these enterprise drones that are being sold at three, four times the cost of a regular drone that does the same exact thing but yet doesn't have these indicators. So I'm gonna bring, so we have a, a specific question, but in order to liven up the show and talk about crap that actually <laughs> matters, um, I, I wanna bring up some kind of, some important points because we have done so much to try to make and cover, uh, to try to make you the safest pilot possible. And when you come to a flight mastery training, do understand that our in-person trainings have information that our online trainings don't. And there's a reason for that. That reason is very simple. If the best education was on YouTube, do you think universities would still exist? Probably not. There's great information on YouTube, but it's typically not the most comprehensive. It typically doesn't come from a, a place of knowledge and the depth and the organization and these things that we learn as trainers to help you retain information typically aren't there. 
So why would I want to give away that information on YouTube where it could just be copied like a lot of our other content? And I may seem pessimistic right now, but what I'm trying to say is that there should be standards for battery indication. Uh, you can't expect to get the best training unless you learn from people who know what they're, that are actually out there flying. And what liability do you have by not being thorough in your education, in your pre-flight checks, in your operations, in your systems management? The liability is quite high. And yet there are real examples of people ruining their businesses because they didn't have standards for batteries. And, or in general. And, and I think it's really important, Rob, even mm -hmm. for our drone manufacturers, and I actually just reached out to DJI this morning and I said, I think it's time to have a conversation about battery indication. Hmm. Because on the Mavic Mini, on the Mavic 2 Enterprise, on the Mavic 2 Enterprise Dual, you cannot see battery voltage. Hmm. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. On the Dual even, huh? Yeah, That's on surprising. the Dual even, a.k.a. the Enterprise product, mm -hmm. a.k.a. the drone that police are using, okay? The drone that has some of the most liability in the industry. Maybe not as much as the M210, but it has liability because think about the people who are using it, right? It's right. law enforcement, it's public safety. And if they don't have all the tools to make the right decisions to make a safe flight, well, then how can we expect them to have safe flights? It's tough to expect which is no what doubt. we're going to be talking about today. So very excited yeah. about that. Actually, extremely grateful that you're here. We do really appreciate it. We appreciate the support. Um, everyone who came to the California class, extremely grateful for you. We had a very unique scenario at the California class, which was we had like a different group for flight mastery, a different group for mapping, and a different group for deliverables. Uh, it was very interesting. Um, but I will say that the, the trend I always see, Rob, is someone will go to the mapping class, and then someone who went to Flight Mastery and Mapping will be like, you're, you're literally shooting yourself in the head by not going to Flight Mastery. Yeah. And when I hear other students say that, I'm like, thank you. I really appreciate that. Thank you. Like, I worked my ass off to make this the best that it could be. And I really appreciate you saying that. So I see this, this constant trend. Someone goes to a mapping class and now they come to Flight Mastery. Absolutely. Because you don't know what you don't know. Well, in fact, uh, one of the Flight Mastery participants was at the Denver Mapping class. He, oh, David Siegman. He's David. a very smart guy. He's very smart. Yes, he is a very, very smart guy. Yeah. I like him a lot. I do too. He's, he's also extremely caring. He's a he's just a nice kid. He uh, is going to do very well. He's a doer. He's definitely a doer. He actually is a pretty interesting guy. I don't know if you saw some of the videos of him riding motorcycles. Mm -mm. And the kid can ride a wheelie for, I guess, as long as he wants to. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty, you don't know what you don't know. <laughs> uh, pretty amazing. Anyways, uh, yeah, so I, that's a perfect example of somebody. I think that might have been he wasn't able to get to Denver in time to do Flight Mastery, or or it might be that he heard that it was something he needed to do, even though he hadn't signed up for it in Denver. So anyways, but you're right. That happens a lot. It does, but I, I'm, I'm grateful for that because I'm grateful that people want to keep working with us, and I'm grateful that they're open to learn. But anyway, let's go ahead and let's uh, get right into today's question, which is brought to you by our dear friends, dear friends, and a very big thank you to GPC Cases. Um, if you need a case, whether it's for your Mavic, your Mavic Mini, they have actually a really cool case for the Mavic Mini, and we have two that we're going to be giving away. Two cases, not Mavic Mini cases. They're going to be Mavic 2 Pro cases um, during our giveaway. But a very special thank you to Beth and Rick Bullman of GPC Cases. We attended their holiday party. Uh, we're, uh, it is difficult to express how just effing awesome they are. <laughs> That's one way. The compassion, the empathy, the drive, the work, everything that they do. They are phenomenal human beings. The customer service is great. Everyone knows that they're good. So long and the short of it is, GPC cases, make sure to check them out. I mean, it, I mean literally, it's, uh, it's one of those things that you, you just can't ignore. If you want to protect your equipment, you want it to last longer, you've got to go to goprofessionalcases.com and use discount code DRONEU15. Pick yourself up a Mavic case, Mavic mini case. You can also sign up for our giveaway, DroneUGiveaway.com, as it goes uh, over the holiday season. We're going to be giving away drones. We're going to be giving away GPC cases. We're going to be giving away accessories. We're going to be giving away a lifetime 
uh, maybe not lifetime access. I jumped the gun there. Uh, an annual access to Drone Whoa. U. Um, <laughs> which, I, you know, I... Could, I'm fine with that. I realize that uh, I've been misspeaking for quite some time. About? The number of courses that we have. Oh, is it more or less? Well, we now have our badging system, and I got my first email on the badging system, and I have been erroneously saying that we have 32 classes. We have 64 classes. We do? We do. According to the badging system. So oh, we better double check the badging system. <laughs> <laughs> but what I love about that badging system is now we can reward uh, our most studious members by providing their information to potential employers. So the super vetting problem, well, that's just another thing that DroneU has solved. But let's go ahead and hear today's question. Good morning, Rob and Paul. This is Ron Jorgensen with Bay Area Studios. We've talked many times about batteries, even when I was up at the flight mastery class and the mapping class in Houston. And we've talked about batteries and the minimum voltage on it. And when we've checked some of the ones that I have here, I have about four batteries that I need to retire. And I don't think we ever talked about proper disposal. I know we're not supposed to take it and put it in the household trash and send it out to the dump because it's going to start a fire. Is there a company that picks them up and recycles them? And that's my question for today. Thanks. Keep up the good work. Thank you, Ron. Appreciate the question. Uh, it just hit me because obviously we listen to these questions before we play them on the air. But he said, is there anyone that will pick them up? I don't know about that. I certainly I know there are places to take them. I don't know about a service that will pick them up. What is the? What are the guys that uh, they have the something junk? They have a company that will pick up your junk. Oh yeah, the green trucks. I've only seen that on the East Coast. Uh, no, they have them around here. If I'm pretty do? sure. Yeah, something or very or something similar. But I wonder if they have a, a disposal unit for uh, things like that. Things I like think, batteries. I think there's a. I think there's a really great disposal unit, uh, Rob. I, I I really actually. I don't think that this is very hard, um, right. although, uh, you know, you and I are in a different environment, right? We're in an environment where we can go out in the middle of the desert and put all of our old batteries and pull out the 30-06 and just control the fire ourselves. <laughs> that may or may we know not it's going to catch on fire. Let's just cause the fire and then, right. and then just throw away the batteries. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> oh, man, you're getting me all excited. I want to go shooting. <laughs> I still got to put Maybe. rounds through my M&P still. So. I'm, yeah, I'm not going to say what I need to put rounds through mine. I might get people to not like me, but um, we... Uh, it's an elephant gun. <laughs> Maybe... <laughs> <laughs> Maybe Ron should just send us his batteries and we'll yeah, take care well, of it. We got you, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think actually this is a question that's kind of difficult to answer because before we've said, you know, you can recycle your batteries at Lowe's, but frankly, I don't think a lot of the customer service agents are really educated on the dangerousness of those batteries and what can happen. So I, we have a store here that's local called Batteries Plus. I think that's a franchise. Is it? So is I'm it? pretty sure they're all around the country. Okay. Well, if they are around the country, then I would recycle your batteries there. Um, they are very educated on exactly what to do with the batteries. And also they have different recycling depending on the type of battery it is. So I think that says a lot in itself. Other than that, there are numerous ways that you can recycle your batteries. I mean, hey, if you're like me, and you just need to, you know, you just need to get some stress out. You know, you just need to beat the punching bag, whatever. We'll get those armor piercing bullet bullets out. You don't even need those. Just get your practice <laughs> rounds out, okay? That's right. And uh, put those batteries up, and just make sure that you're ready to uh, to control the fire. Maybe dig a little hole so that when the battery t falls over, it just goes into the hole. And then make sure that you do fully clean everything up so that we don't have any environmental hazards here. Really Absolutely. important. Very important. Don't want to ruin the environment or the world we live in. Um, but, you know, hey, if, if a Lowe's member is not going to be able to know what to do with these batteries, let's just solve the problem ourselves and go out and put a little bullet right through that. <laughs> right through that battery. Yep. And then... Uh, Might go do that this afternoon. And then... Um, and then you can recycle it at Lowe's. So. Yeah, well. <laughs> yeah, Fire problem solved. <laughs> well, because either way, that's right. You're going to need to take it somewhere. I mean, I'm just looking here. And so there's Batteries Plus, which you mentioned. There's Al Albuquerque Computer and Electronics Recycling, Battery Systems of Albuquerque. I know that here in Albuquerque, we also have a household hazardous waste department that you can take things to. So, yeah. I, now, emphasis on take things to. I don't think they're going to be coming and picking them up from you, but... 
Anyways, as most of you know, there's probably various places to take these kinds of uh, disposables in your area, but um, taking them out into the hills is not a bad idea. Yeah. It's <laughs> just make sure that you just prepared. don't leave them there. Don't You're, leave them yeah, there. Yeah, don't leave them there. Probably maybe like put down some foil or something in a hole, dig the hole out, not around vegetation, have a fire extinguisher with you. I shouldn't have to explain these things. You should know them, but just making sure in case we forget, we're all human, right? Well, and where we go, honestly, is a lot of dirt and it's a lot of middle of nowhere. So, uh, but nonetheless, you want to take certain precautions. Totally true. Yeah. Well, I think that ends this very short episode of Ask a Drone You. <laughs> uh, but guys, girls, don't be afraid to send in your questions. Please go to askdroneyou.com. You know, we haven't talked about subject tracking. We haven't talked about videography or cinematography. And there are definitely some clear trends going on in the production industry right now, which is all centered around heavy lift. Pretty much, you're not a successful movie shooting company unless you have an Inspire 2 and an Alta. Uh, the Inspire 2 for the close stuff that can shoot the Cine SSD material. Um, but <clears throat> long and the short of it is, uh, I think that... Um, <laughs> There's a lot to talk about there. There's also a lot of talk about business. There's also a lot to talk about talking about ourselves and what we can work on. Um, I've been working my way through a new book, and it's been uh, Earth Shattering. One of those books that uh, deeply makes you deeply introspective. Yeah, and that, which is a good place to start when you're reading something like that, because the alternative is to start thinking about other people. As you're reading it and listening to it, uh, right? Let's be honest. I, I did that too. Absolutely. But you said I started with introspection. Yeah. Well, that's good. the keys to success are very simple, my friends. Self-awareness and hard work. <laughs> On that bombshell, that's going to do it for us today. My name is Paul. My name is Rob. This is Ask Drone You. Ask Drone You.